Hi, I'm Rob and uh, I'm here for Music Radar and GuitarWorld.com and we're here on the Gibson stand at NAMM 2020 and we're here with Matt from Gibson. Hey, how's it going? And he's going to show us around the, the real key new models that they've got this year. Yeah, um, so, so we're starting with this yeah, Les Paul. So, uh, Gibson USA, uh, last year we offered a, a double cut Les Paul special tribute, which is a, a very cool model, but we had lots of demand for just give us a single cut Les Paul special, uh, very similar to the uh, Les Paul special in our uh, main line, but people wanted it as affordable as possible. So this is, uh, we're very happy to present a Les Paul special uh, single cut uh, under a thousand dollars with your choice of P90s or humbuckers uh, in four beautiful colors and uh, these are just incredible instruments you got your compensated wrap tail piece um, for, for uh, superb intonation and they're you know super versatile super playable and uh, there's no excuse not to have one of these in your collection so they're fantastic instruments what are the other finishes available uh, well, you can see them uh, behind us here. So we've got walnut, cherry, and then we've got a black, kind of like a worn finish look. So super thin, a uh, little bit different look, but kind of has a vintage vibe to it. So. Yeah, yeah, they're cool. No, they're kind of like no frills, but yep. yeah, yeah, cool. So nice. All right, let's move so. on to the next one. Okay. Okay. So well, we've got the uh, '70s uh, Flying V and the '70s yep. Explorer here. That's right. So uh, what I can tell you about these is, uh, so um, my boss, our chief merchant officer, Cesar, is a, a huge uh, 70s rocker fan. And of course, uh, you know, Explorers and Flying Vs became famous in the 70s, or reintroduced in the 70s, and then famous in the hard rock and heavy metal music in the 1980s. And so he really wanted us to represent that era of music with two guitars with that uh, 70s aesthetic and uh, high output pickups for the shredders and metalheads out there. So these are, uh, they're not active pickups, but they're uh, yeah, exceptionally high output um, creations uh, from our master luthier, Jim DeCola, he, he designed these pickups. And they, uh, they're outfitted with uh, bound necks, and uh, Flying V has a matching headstock. Um, not, they're not reissues, nor were we really trying to make them reissues. We, again, we just wanted to make a great instrument inspired by that era, S similar aesthetic and then just built to shred, basically. So that's the idea. And the standard Explorer and a standard V are both still available in the range yeah, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. Yep. Excellent. Just, just new Great. OK, so th this is the first of a couple of new, of, uh, additional new models for the original series, yeah, right? So we, we have a couple of uh, new additions to the original series, including this SG Junior. So if you're like me, uh, you believe that good things happen when you keep it simple. And when Gibson kept it simple, especially with the, the Les Paul Jr. and also SG Jr., it's just a fun, pure instrument. It's just like built for rock and roll, um, but it can handle anything, and it's really all you need. So um, this is, uh, you know, all mahogany, all solid wood, uh, just, you know, amazing, the Made in America uh, tribute to the original SG Jr. Um, it's probably actually even uh, more robust than those original SG Juniors due to the revised neck heel. So um, basically, it's a fantastic instrument, affordable, versatile, and just plain cool. So, um, what is that like to kind of standard P90 that you, you yes, produce? Standard P90, and uh, it's going to have you know output if it matters around 8k ohm resistance. So pretty middle of the road, but meaty. Uh, it'll pull out some great dark mid tones. So yeah, nice. So we've got another uh, new original series guitar here, another single P90 model, the Les Paul Junior. Yep, so again, uh, listening to our fans, uh, everybody was asking for black. Black school, black never goes out of style. And uh, we outfitted it with this tortoiseshell pickguard just to set it off a little bit, give it a little bit of contrast. But as an instrument, it's just uh, you know robust, um, you know, versatile, solid mahogany junior and everything a junior should be so it's got a great like medium C neck profile and uh, it's got the uh, same USA classic uh, P90 for kind of a, a classic sound that has that little bit of meat and dark mid tone um, but it's just beautiful guitar in black and it looks really sharp with that tortoise salt pickguard so go check them out okay now this is a really really great year for Epiphone um, it's uh, got the headstock change and the new original series. That's 
right. So it's kind of a beginning of a new era. Um, just like we did with the Gibson range uh, last year, we've separated into original and modern. And uh, we'll have two different categories uh, within those, those categories of inspired by Gibson. So models that are not uh, originally Epiphone models. Um, and then also Epiphone originals, which are models like a Riviera or a Sheridan that have always been Epiphone models. But in the inspired by Gibson collection, um, you know, we you know, consider the possibility of using different headstocks. And it was very, uh, we were very quick to uh, point to the one headstock that is intrinsically Epiphone and also intrinsically Gibson, which is this short Kalamazoo headstock. So Gibson uh, employed that headstock to differentiate Gibson and Epiphone when they were made side by side in the, in the Kalamazoo plant uh, from 1957 to uh, about 1964 when they changed the headstock design. And uh, it's a beautiful headstock design. It sets it apart, but proportionally, we think it looks a lot better on, a, on an Epiphone guitar, especially one that's uh, inspired by a Gibson like this. But if you recognize this model, uh, you probably recognize it from the current Gibson range. So you can tell, though, how amazing and close this is to its Gibson counterpart. Scary good, if you will. And for under $400, it's a beautiful guitar. So this SG Special is just the tip of the iceberg. We've got a whole range now of Epiphone inspired by Gibson that mimics the uh, Gibson range as well. And then we've also got Epiphone Originals. You may have seen the uh, Texan Frontier Excelente acoustic guitars. So we're just going to have fun with that, play with it, and uh, stay tuned because there's a lot of cool stuff to come. Choo -choo. Yeah. And this is available in two finishes, this model. Yeah, this right. is the Pelham so, Blue. Yeah, so again, anything you've seen in the Gibson range, uh, there will be an Epiphone equivalent now. So it's kind of a one-to-one -one ratio. So just like Gibson, we've got antique Pelham Blue and sparkling Burgundy. So again, under $400. Now this this is a model that, that really stood out for, for people in the, in the lineup shot. It's uh, can you tell us a bit more about this one? Yeah, so this is uh, our 61 SG standard. So again, just like the USA 61 SG standard, uh, we've got the Meister Vibrola, we've got the reflector knobs, and we've got the mahogany uh, neck, mahogany body, and uh, Pro Bucker pickups. Everywhere Everything you need, nothing you don't. This is a, a fantastic Someone instrument. A What's the retail on that? Uh, I believe the retail the is uh, under six hundred dollars. Okay, now these these are really cool. These are like a um, it's called a worn finish. It's like a satin mat, isn't it? It's re really kind of different for Gibson. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, this is uh, inspired by the Gibson Les Paul Classic. So. Another opportunity to kind of play with uh, what's possible is through Epiphone. And uh, this is a classic worn with a gold finish. And it's, uh, as you said, kind of a satin feel, especially the neck is a satin feel. Uh, but the cool thing is the short headstock, again, the Kalamazoo headstock. And on this model with the finish, I mean, it's already, Epiphone already was a professional uh, quality instrument. But now, again, we feel that proportionally and just physically, it, we really stepped up our game, so um, great, fantastic model, and uh, very accessible again under four hundred dollars for this one. Is it is it chambered body on that? Uh, solid body. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we're in the uh, acoustic room now, and uh, Gibson are really embracing the acoustic side, aren't they? Yeah. And these we're going to look at the Epiphones. Yeah. So uh, this first year, Gibson's had a separate acoustic room, so. Uh, uh, it's equally chaotic in here, so bear with us, but uh, we have an opportunity to showcase one of our Epiphone original examples. So these are uh, three models that are uh, intrinsically Epiphone. There is no Gibson equivalent, and uh, they're, they have a great story. So presenting this year, we have the Texans, we've got the Frontier, and we've got the Excelente. So what's cool about the Texans is this: there is, uh, like I said, no Gibson equivalent because of the scaling. A lot of people think this is just an Epiphone version of a J45. Actually, has a 25 and a half inch long scale to it, which is most similar to an advanced jumbo. There's really nothing else like it. So um, really cool instruments. Just have a big voice. They're boomy, but they're warm. I love a Texan. So we're also doing a Made in USA Texan now, out of Montana. So to complement the, these. Um, we also have a Frontier, this Ropen Cactus Pickguard. Very desirable guitar on the vintage market. So I'm really excited to be able to offer it at an affordable price point through Epiphone. And uh, it's got all the detail that you would expect. Maple back and sides. Got this beautiful sunburst finish. Bursted sides, bursted neck. Gold hardware, super classy guitar. What system have they got in the, what preamp system? Uh, I believe uh, it's got the, uh, uh, 
Yeah, the Fishman VTC, I believe. Yeah, volume tone control in there. And then uh, this is the uh, Excelente model. So this is uh, probably my favorite acoustic guitar. So cool story. I just love that um, only 121 were made in the 1960s. Um, it was developed uh, one by one of Gibson sales persons. It was used by Ernest Tubb and Loretta Lynn in the 60s. And uh, it's just badass. It's got an ebony board. It's got this multi-piece neck. Uh, it's got a uh, rosewood back and sides. And it's got uh, uh, this incredible landing eagle pickguard. Um, but one of the other reasons I love this model is it was the most expensive flat top that Gibson ever made in the 60s. It was the most expensive on the price list, and it helps tell the story of Epiphone because uh, a lot of people don't realize it's Gibson's older brother, not younger brother. You know, Epiphone started in 1873, absorbed by Gibson in uh, 1957, and then started its own story, continued a, a really interesting story of, of super high-end guitars. So, continuing the legacy here. Any idea on the price on this one? Uh, yes, I believe uh, with the case uh, we're at uh, $9.99, $7.99, $5.99. Oh, excellent. So it's really Epiphone's kind of celebrating its history, but also giving people the option of having Gibson equivalents at a more affordable price point. Yeah, I, I always tell people it's like we just doubled the lineup overnight, really. It, it's, it's pretty exciting. And I think all of the guitars benefit for it. So. Excellent. Thank you very much, Matt.